In today's video, I'm going to be answering the question, how do you get into a caloric surplus without gaining body fat? But before we do that, let's jump into today's RDP Advent Calendar Calisthenics Tip of the Day. Today's calisthenics tip is a great way to make sure that you're still getting a lot of hamstring activation in your bridges. Lots of times when people do hip bridges, they feel like they're pushing outwards, which means they get a lot of tension in their quads, but not nearly enough in the back of their legs. So here's a simple way on how to fix this. Instead of setting up for the normal hip bridge like you normally would, put a particular emphasis on pulling your heels as close to your hips as possible. I'm physically like almost trying to curl my hamstrings. So I'm getting my ankles close to my hips and then with that tension, extending your hips upwards. Keeping that tension, feeling like you're still pulling as much as you can. So you're looking to build some muscle and you've been told over and over that you need to be in a caloric surplus. But there's a problem with this idea because eating a whole lot is often conducive for gaining body fat. So instead of ending up with a ripped uh, set of muscles, you end up more with the dad bod. How can you avoid this sort of scenario? Well, the first point is to put a bit of a dent in this idea of a caloric surplus. Now, a surplus, by definition, is an amount of something that you don't need. So when people ask me, do I need to be in a caloric surplus, it's kind of a bit of a redundant or a question that answers itself, because of course you don't. Because when you're ingesting more of something that you need, then you don't need it. And this is especially the case with calories. And the reason is because your body has a very good way of dealing with excess calories. It either passes them through or it turns them into body fat. Some people do get better results when they increase their intake and they eat a little bit more. But we often mistake this for a caloric surplus. People eat more, they start to build some muscle and they think, now I'm in a caloric surplus. Not at all, because if you're using those calories to build muscle, that's not a surplus because you're now using them. What ended up happening instead was before you were under eating or under feeding yourself. And now you're not at a surplus, you're back to level. But the question is, how do you do this without going into a caloric surplus and gaining body fat and you end up gaining like maybe one pound of muscle, but 10 pounds of fat? Consider the motto here at the Red Delta Project of stabilize and progress. This is the two-step process you need to accomplish anything in life, but especially when it comes to health and fitness. Stabilize your habits first, then make them progressive. So to stabilize your diet first and foremost is the most important thing. To do that, focus on getting regular meals, two to three good solid meals. And second of all, make sure you're paying attention to your three Ps. So at each of these meals, you've got a good protein source. You also have some sort of plant or whole natural foods to improve your nutritional content of your foods. And three is portion. Make sure you're eating enough to satisfy yourself. You don't need to necessarily be overeating and to a point where you're stuffed and full, but you don't wanna be leaving the table hungry or feeling like you've got these big bouts of hunger and deprivation throughout the day or week either. All right, so once you've got all that taken care of, now ask yourself the question if you really need to eat more. The best way I can think of to do this is just to eat more of what you're already eating. You don't need to add in a whole lot of different things or fancy shakes and stuff like that. If you have two eggs in the morning for breakfast, have three or four. If you have a sandwich for lunch, double up the meat portion on it, or have two sandwiches. Go Emilio Estevez style in a breakfast club. That's literally what I used to do in high school. From there, it's as simple as tracking, does that make a difference? Is that improving your workouts? Is that helping you feel better, recover faster, and improve your energy levels? That's the first foremost thing that you wanna be looking for. Don't worry too much if it's going to build muscle just yet. Building muscle is a very slow process, but being able to do things like recover faster, have better energy, and improve your workouts is a much faster uh, metric that you can become aware of to know if adding a little bit more to your diet is going to help you in the long run. 
So what are some of your favorite tips for dietary approaches for helping to folks build muscle? We'd love to hear from you down below in the RDP community. And if you have any questions on that hip extension exercise, uh, leave those down below as well. Till then, be fit, live free.